if you're talking about young men in the sport, that's how they're referred to. They're referred to as young men. They're not referred to as boys. Whereas young girls or young women are referred to as girls. Why not young women or just women? You're listening to Femcanic Garage, the podcast that features women in the automotive and motorsports industries. A community that elevates, empowers, and evolves by smashing stereotypes and breaking down barriers for women. I'm your host, Jamie Glossman. Buckle up for the ride, Fem Mechanics. Aaron Vogel is in the driver's seat today. Erin is a professional race car driver and performance driving instructor. She started going to the racetrack with her family at the age of 25. And by age 30, Erin and her dad decided to launch a race team. In 2017, she got her first podium, and since then, she has been unstoppable. She was the first female driver to win a race in the Pro-Am category globally in SRO competition. Erin hopes to encourage and inspire young girls and women to get into motorsports. Now let's sit back and enjoy the ride. Hello, Femcanics. This is Jamie B coming to you, and I have Erin Vogel in the hot seat or driver's seat today. How are you doing today, Erin? I'm well, Jamie. Thank you so much for having me on the show this week. I'm glad you're on here. Uh, I've been watching you on Insta for a while now. And uh, it's it's one of those things where the stars finally aligned and here we are having a conversation about an industry that we both love, but yet do two completely different things in it. So that's part of the fun. Yeah, totally different sides of the coin. It's fun to meet people from uh, other parts of the industry and get to have a little chat and uh, connect in ways that uh, we don't get to on Instagram. Yeah, absolutely. So... There's a couple things that fascinate me about your journey. And before I dive into that, uh, the audience and the listeners heard a little bit of your background, but I want to kind of go back early on. Now, you actually started your racing career, and dare I say a little later, right? It, it, it's all relative, right? You were, what, 25? Yeah, I was uh, 25 when I first got on a racetrack. Um, but I really wouldn't say that I even started my racing journey until I was 30. Um, that was when I finally got in a race car and got wheel to wheel. Uh, prior to that, I actually said I was never going to go racing. So, um, so yeah, I mean, not as, you know, there are people that have gotten their start later than I have, but, um, even just among the women that I know, uh, that are racing at the level that I'm racing at, I definitely got started later than they did. Um, and it's been a fun journey, but a lot of hard work. This is out of pure curiosity because I, I think it was Martina Kwan that I asked this. I think for some reason I think that she sits shotgun sometimes a lot when she's teaching. She does, right? yeah, yeah. So I remember asking her in her interview, and I said, "Do you notice any differences between riding with women and riding with men?" in these situations, in these trainings. And I'm just curious. I, I know what her answer was, right? Yeah. What's, what's your answer? Did, have, have you, cause I know you've had the opportunity to sit with both, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think there are a few exceptions where, you know, personality trumps gender for whatever reasons. And, you know, certainly sure. men and women can share certain traits, but yeah, in general, it seems that the women are uh, a little more open initially to taking your um, instruction. Sometimes, though, they're a little bit less able to understand. I think sometimes men have had more of an opportunity to go hoon around on the street a bit, and women don't always get that opportunity as young people. Um, so, yeah, and and of course, the biggest thing, and it's a, it's gotten better as I've done it longer, and uh, probably as I age a little myself, but. I certainly have gotten, and I know that most women have gotten that look like when you're paired with a new student, if it's an older male, particularly, they're like, oh, you're going to be my instructor. What am I going to learn from you? You know? <laughs> so, I mean, 
so that can sometimes be a barrier you have to overcome and get them to understand that they actually can learn a lot and it can still be a fun experience. And I'm not here to hold them back. I'm not going to be their mom and be like, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't. I'm going to be like, yeah, go faster. Let's do this, but let's do it smart and let's build the <laughs> skills, you know, cause you know, I mean, I want to go fast too. That's why I'm in this sport. Right. So, um, yeah. but yeah, there is a difference. And, and, um, I think sometimes to the women start out a little slower not all of us. I don't think I did, um, but I think a lot of women do. And so I think that helps too with with things. Um, actually, Martina's boyfriend, Dwayne Dement, has a saying that it, one of the hardest things to do in motorsports is to slow or in racing is to slow a fast driver down long enough for them to learn a new skill. And it, you do, you really have to do that. Like to learn something, you kind of have to back it up a little bit, which can be so hard because you just want to push, push, push where that's, you know, that's our personality type, I guess. Um most of us racers. So it's, um, it can be good to have a female student who comes into it going like, look, I know I don't know anything about this sport. So I'm just going to go slow and I'm going to listen. And, you know, sometimes by the end of the day, they're like four or five times faster than they were. And I mean, that can happen with men too, but I see it a lot more in women um, just because it's kind of a, you know, different mindset coming in, I guess. Yeah. It's a, like a learning mindset. Yeah, exactly. It, I don't know any other way of putting it. The um, when you were in those moments when, because I, I imagine you felt it when you would get, you know, the the um, student would get assigned to you, and if it's it's an older gentleman. Maybe it wasn't clearly said. Maybe they said something, but you felt it. I'm sure, right? Both Did ways. any part of you just want to be like, here, sit shotgun. Let me show you how it's done. And like, just want to scare the shit out of them. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. Like, Are you ready to listen now? <laughs> yeah, of course. And sometimes we get to do that, which is good. But, um, but a lot of times we don't get to do that, right? So especially if it's a more advanced <sighs> student and they're like, well, I've been doing this for a while and you're so young. What am I going to learn? And you're a woman. What am I going to learn from you? Or a girl. You know, I don't even think they see me as a woman sometimes. I think they think I'm a girl. Um. But yeah, I mean, I had that conversation with my dad recently, Aaron. Yeah, uh, we were at, we were at Good Guys National, okay, or uh, Hot Rod here in Columbus, Ohio, this past weekend, and he pointed over there. He's like, "Oh, the girls over there," and I look over there, and these are women probably in their thirties and forties, and I'm like, "Dad, those are women." Yeah, he's like, "Well, what do you what do you mean?" I, I said, "They're women." I said, "What if?" And they're in their professional setting. They, they right. were in a vendor's booth. They were, right? And I'm like, what if someone at work called you a boy? Absolutely. Would you be offended? He's like, well, yeah. And I'm like, why is it different for women? Like, at what point have we earned the right to be called a grown-ass woman? <laughs> right. Exactly. And it's, I mean, I think there's a difference between, I still like to be called miss if I'm in, in like a setting and someone's like, oh, miss, here's your keys for your, you know, the valet or whatever. But like, I, you know, I don't really want to be called ma'am, but I definitely want to be thought of as a woman, like as an adult, you know, I mean, yeah. I, I'm trying, I am trying to retain my youthful energy, of course, um, and my youthful appearance or whatever. But yeah, but there's a certain immaturity thing that's conveyed by the use of the two different words. And it's, yeah, it's important to, to do that. But yeah, I mean, I've, I've totally had that experience. I, I've mostly, most people don't, won't say anything to the organizers about me, but you know, I'll get kind of a look or a sense of the fact that they're questioning the relationship or how that's going to go. But, um, I actually, and I'm, I'm good friends with him now, but I did have a gentleman one time who went to the event organizers and I don't think he knew that the event organizer was my dad because we don't look that much alike. <laughs> But uh, my grandmother's Mexican and my dad got the dark skin and I got my mom's Irish skin. So we don't really look alike. But um, yeah. and he said something about having me as an instructor. And my dad was like, well, maybe just just go out for like one session and just see how it goes, you know. And um, and we ended up actually having a really great time. And by the end of the weekend, he came to me and he told me that um you know, he was like, I have to thank you. I really went into this weekend. I mean, he, he told me to my face, I went into this weekend thinking I wasn't going to learn anything from you. And actually, I got faster than I've gotten in my last couple track events. And I, you told me things that no one else had ever talked about with me. And I actually learned a lot. And I just wanted to tell you that I was wrong. And so that was kind of a cool experience. And now we're good friends. And you know, he's, uh, he's a big 
you know, supporter of our club and we see each other at every event. And it's, you know, it's, so it's good to have those stories because that's not always the way it goes. And, right, right. And Aaron, I, I want to highlight what you're saying right here. And I, I say it all the time. Femcanic Garage in this movement of uh, bringing women into motorsports is not about anti-men. It's not like no. at all. The, the majority of the time, the mentors and developers and biggest cheerleaders are men. But see what that story you just shared, and I want to emphasize it to particularly the female listeners. This is why it's so important to keep showing up because you never know when you're going to have an opportunity to open someone's eyes. Just like this weekend, I opened my dad's eyes and just not to criticize him about it or get in a fight. It's nothing like that or to cause conflict, but it's to get men in this example to pause and question what they always thought to be true. And in this case, men are the only ones that can teach me something really valuable to reduce my track time. Before we jump into the red line round, I have been geeking out about asking you what it is like driving the NSX. It's an interesting experience. I love Acura. Good. But, but that's a supercar. <laughs> it's a supercar. And correct me if I'm wrong, Aaron. It is the new one, right? Yeah. It's, is it the new style one? It's the new NSX, um, new being, I think it's four years old now. The race car um, has been around for yeah. about four or five years. Um, has so, it been that long? Already? Yeah. Can you believe it? Gosh, time Yeah. I, I, um, I can't. I can't. I remember <laughs> when it launched. And I remember geeking out because the designer's a woman. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right? It, it, yeah. How, how her design got chosen was such a cool story. Like, it, the designers submitted their designs anonymously. And hers got chosen. Yeah. And I can't help but wonder if it wasn't anonymous, would hers have still been chosen? You got to wonder. She was the first female. Yeah. As the lead designer for a supercar. Yeah, exactly. Super cool. And I mean, I think you can kind of see it in the styling a little bit. I don't, maybe not, but to me it has kind of a, it's just a, it's just a unique looking car. And I think it's an interesting yeah. riff on the original, which was, a, a car that I have always loved and always wanted to own and drive and I, maybe someday, but yeah, the, it's a, it really, like has, it, it, it's a respectful nod to the old. Yeah. With but like a new flair, which I think is cool. Yeah. It's so forward looking too, in a way it's like, I mean, it kind of looks like a spaceship and it kind of feels like a spaceship to drive it. It kind of sounds like a spaceship. I mean, not as much as maybe like an electric car. Those ones really sound like spaceships, but, um, but yeah, it's just very nimble and very light in the hands, and um, it's a really, it's a, been a really interesting car. It's super well balanced with the mid engine design. What's your parting advice to other femcanics finding their way in this industry? Um, just have faith in yourself. I was going to say have confidence, but that's hard. You know, that's hard to do. But I think confidence comes from having faith in yourself. And um, just knowing that you're worthy and that you're capable. And I think a lot of that comes from knowing that you're willing to do the work. Um, you know, because I think if we, if we kind of know we're not willing to do the work, then we kind of don't have that faith in ourselves, right? So it's, it's just being realistic with yourself about what you're willing to do the work for and what you're not. And then, you know, figuring out that what that work is and doing it. And, and that will give you all the confidence that you need if you didn't already have it. Let's be honest, most of us aren't born with that, I don't think, you know, but it takes some ego. Imposter syndrome is a real thing, right? Holy cow. Huge. Yeah, we all feel that. I mean, the most eye-opening thing to me was to meet incredibly accomplished race car drivers who started karting when they were seven um, and achieved amazing things in their karting career and still feel like imposters in this sport. And I was like, oh, okay. So it's not just, not just because I started when I was 30, you know? So yeah, just know that everybody else well, is how going, it creeps up on you. What's that? Isn't it wild how it creeps up on you? Oh yeah. And sometimes at the strange times. Totally. Right? It's insane. I, yeah, it is insane. And ladies, here you have Aaron 
very accomplished race car driver. And it happens to all of us. The biggest key is keep doing it. Keep, keep getting out there and keep going. Yep. You, you work through the imposter syndrome through action. You yes. just keep going. Yeah, that was beautiful, Jamie. So true. Yeah. Get in the car and press down the pedal and keep going. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, you know, metaphorically, get in the car. Yeah. Of life. Yeah. And don't keep it in park. Don't Let's keep go. it in park. Mm-mm. Yeah. Full send. Yes. I'm Erin Vogel. I'm a race car driver and I'm a fem mechanic. Hey, fem mechanics. This is Jamie B. Thanks for listening to the preview. If you would like to listen to the complete interview, we provided two convenient links below that will link directly to this episode. These links take you to Spotify or Apple Podcasts. You can always go to your favorite podcast listening platform and search for Femcanic Garage. While you're there, if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button and give us a rating. It helps the podcast reach more women. And just know, we appreciate you and your support. This is Jamie B. signing off. Are you a Femcanic?